from the Tribune News Network, this is Newsbreak. I'm Krishna Russell. A police officer has been placed on administrative leave pending the outcome of an investigation into an alarming, widely circulated voice note purporting police brutality and alleged assault of a man while in custody. In the four-minute-long recording, an officer who identifies himself as an assistant police superintendent can be heard shouting and beating a man. It is not clear what led to the confrontation. However, the incident took place during a conversation between another male officer and a man in custody who was questioning charges brought against him. About one minute into that recording, the officer at the center of the audio's controversy starts cursing and hitting the man in custody. Police Commissioner Paul Roll confirmed to reporters that the officer directly involved in the incident had been suspended. However, it is not clear what action has been taken against the officers who encouraged the move. A man was shot dead last night in Pinewood Gardens, police have said. The incident took place after 9 p.m. at Sugar Apple Street. Assistant Superintendent Audley Peters said officers who responded to the scene met a white Honda parked in the middle of the street with extensive damage. A man was in the driver's seat with apparent gunshot wounds to his torso. He was pronounced dead at the scene. According to initial reports, the victim's vehicle was traveling east on Sugar Apple Street when a small Japanese car crossed in front of it and stopped. A passenger got out of that car and fired shots in the direction of the victim, injuring him. The suspect appeared to be in his 20s, ASP Peters said. His identity was not known up to press time. Anyone with information is asked to contact police at 502-9991. That's 502-9991. The nation's COVID-19 death toll has risen to 185 after two more deaths were recorded. The latest deaths involve two New Providence women, a 62-year-old who died on March 7th and a 57-year-old who died on March 8th. Fifteen other deaths are currently under investigation. Meanwhile, only one new case was recorded on Monday, bringing the overall case count to 8,642. The new case is an Abaco resident. Doctors' Hospital's proposed Freeport flagship with the Cleveland Clinic is exactly what the doctor ordered to revive the Bahamian economy post-COVID, an ex-cabinet minister has asserted. Dr. Dwayne Sands, former Minister of Health, told the Tribune that the two sides' is potential partnership in developing a private Grand Bahama hospital could pave the way for the Bahamas to truly break into medical tourism, reducing overseas medical spending by locals, and develop an expanded high-quality workforce to underpin the sector. Your complete news and information source, this is the Tribune News Network. In international news, Congress sped toward final approval today of a landmark $1.9 trillion COVID-19 relief bill as President Joe Biden and Democrats neared a major triumph for the party's priorities and showcased the unity they'll need to forge future victories. The House was on track to use a virtual party line to approve the 628-page measure, which represents Democrats' effort to bridle the catastrophic pandemic and revive the enfeebled economy. Four days after after the Senate passed the measure over unanimous Republican opposition, GOP House counterparts were poised to do the same for a bill they've characterized as bloated, crammed with liberal policies, and heedless of signs the dual crises are easing. The Tribune's AccuWeather update a service of Bahamas Power and Light Company. A strong high pressure will continue to produce fresh to strong winds as it sits over the archipelago while a frontal boundary meanders in the vicinity of the southeast Bahamas. Small craft operators should remain in port. Swimmers should refrain from entering the waters due to dangerous surf and life-threatening rip currents. Motorists and pedestrians traveling along coastal roads, especially the glass window bridge in Eleuthera and the fishing hole road in Grand Bahama, should be alert for sea spray, wind-blown sand, and waves overtopping seawalls. This can reduce visibility and create hazardous walking, running, and driving conditions. For all areas, it'll be partly cloudy to cloudy with pockets of sunshine, windy and mild with quick passing showers, becoming partly cloudy, windy, and cool with passing showers tonight in the northwest and central islands, cloudy, windy, and warm with isolated showers or a thunderstorm in the southeast Bahamas through tonight. Small craft operators should remain in port, winds northeast to east, 
northeast at 20 to 25 knots, with higher gusts in the northwest Bahamas, and northeasterly at 25 to 30 knots, with gusts to near gale force in the central and southeast Bahamas. Sea 7 to 10 feet in the northwest Bahamas, building 8 to 12 feet in the central and southeast Bahamas. Large north and northeasterly swells. We'll have a daytime high temperature of 77 degrees and an overnight low temperature of 66. The sun will set this afternoon at 615 and will rise tomorrow morning at 623. That's Newsbreak. Details of the day's top stories in the Tribune newspaper, now on the streets, or stay up to date online at Tribune242.com.